This past week, to accommodate a busy schedule at the church, Sunday's worship service this morning was recorded on Tuesday before the tragic events occurred that have overwhelmed our nation. While we believe the service as it was prepared speaks meaningfully to us still, we wanted to acknowledge that it does omit any specific reference to the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis and the protests and the destruction that have followed. So before our service begins, hear these words from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Today is Pentecost, a story that stands in sharp contrast to the realities of this past week, and truthfully, in contrast to the past weeks and years and centuries in our country. For Pentecost is the story of the day the Holy Spirit brought the church to life through the power of breath and words. By the powerful wind of God, people began speaking to one another that day, and they could hear and understand each other clearly and deeply. Through such speaking and hearing, diverse people became a community, bound by love and concern for one another, and especially for the oppressed and for the vulnerable. Acts of compassion and justice were their daily duty and delight. But in our land, there is a need for a new Pentecost among us. For we do not hear, do not heed, we do not honor one another as God intends and calls us to do. Even though we speak a common language, even when the words spoken are loud and clear and plain and searing to all. These were the words George Floyd spoke. Please, man, I can't breathe. My stomach hurts, my neck hurts, everything hurts. Please, I can't breathe. Give me some water or something. Mama, Mama, I'm through. Please, I can't breathe. I'm dying. Some in the crowd on the streets that day heard and understood his words, for he spoke a language they also know. And hearing him cry, they responded with cries of their own. Let him breathe, man. He is a human being. Get off his neck. Between him and the crowd that day were some who heard and understood the words, but did not listen. They understood his cries, but responded with silence and a bent knee. Hear these words from Philippians 2, one of the first ancient hymns of the church. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each one of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. And being born in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God, in your mercy, forgive us. God, in your mercy, breathe a new spirit among us and in us and through us. God, in your mercy, may we bend our knees only at the name of Jesus and bend them not in power but in humility, not in ways that tighten death but in ways that increase life, not in boasts of might but in expressions of service, confessing with one voice that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen.